we push the fact that we're Israeli Jews to do to resist in ways that Palestinians can't. And then what we also do is we we raise money abroad to to build to rebuild houses that have been demolished. Now we rebuilt a house two years ago with money raised by the Methodist churches in Minnesota. That's right. Yeah. The Methodist churches in Minnesota they have what's called the love the love uh, love offering offering yeah the love offering and um, and um, <coughs> they gave us fifty two thousand dollars so you know to rebuild the home is we took the one of the more expensive ways to resist the occupation but what we try to do is raise money because we can't get money it's it's an illegal activity it's civil disobedience so because it's illegal to rebuild the demolished home of a Palestinian. Um, do you so, never get arrested? No, and we do get arrested. You do? No, we do get arrested. But again, as Israeli Jews, they're not going to do anything. The and, the, and, and because we're doing it, the Palestinians are a little bit protected. But, uh, but you know, we can't raise money from foundations from this. You know, the only way is from people for this kind of work. Because nobody's going to, no foundation to give money to civil disobedience. And here's where the term viable becomes important. Israel wants a Palestinian state because it, it, it has to get rid of that Palestinian population to keep Israel Jewish. But it doesn't want to give up control of the country. You see, so the issue isn't a Palestinian state. Sharon wants a Palestinian state. The issue is, is it going to be a real state, a viable state with borders and, and coherent territory and an economy? Sovereignty and contiguity. and contiguity with Jerusalem as its capital, because Jerusalem is is the economic heart of any Palestinian state. Without Jerusalem, it's a third world country with no economy. Or is it going to be a South African type atmosphere? That's the issue. Now, just to finish this this story quickly, what's happened is that last April, a year ago exactly, Sharon went to Washington. Again. You know, Sharon has visited Bush more than any other foreign leader, including Blair. Wow. And, uh, and uh, he went to the White House last April, and there, was, there ensued what was called the Bush-Sharon exchange of letters. Sharon came with four options about how much settlement could Israel keep, how much land could it keep. He came with a minimum and then a little more than a minimum, a little more, a little more, you know, to see what he could sell to Bush. Bush pulled out a fifth option. Bush gave Sharon, without Sharon asking for it, more than Sharon could ever have dreamed of. I mean, it was really incredible. What the Bush letter says is, first, Israel does not have to go back to the 1967 borders. The whole basis of the two states, the, the two state solution. This is the whole basis of the Oslo peace process. This has been the basis of political peace processes since 1967. And all the UN resolutions. And all the UN resolutions, starting with UN resolution 242, all say that Israel will will it will get have its security in, uh, guaranteed, but it has to leave the occupied territory. That's, that's the principle. And, uh, and Bush essentially undercut the whole basis of the two-state solution by neutralizing UN Resolution 242 by saying, no, Israel does not have to go back to the borders of, uh, of 67. The second thing he said that was even was just as difficult was that Israel can keep these settlement blocks. These settlement blocks are now Israel. They're not to be negotiated. In other words, he allowed Israel to annex between 25 and 30 percent of the West Bank. Of course, the Palestinians were furious. The Palestinians said, why don't we have a meeting and give Texas back to Mexico? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, who's, who's forced to give, to give? He gave 30 percent of the West Bank to Israel. And not only was that, did that happen, which is a fundamental change, and it, it undercut the roadmap 
Now, the irony is the roadmap initiative that you've heard about yes. is supposed to be based on the, what's called the Bush vision. Yeah. So he undercut his own plan, in a sense, because the roadmap talks about a viable Palestinian state. But you can't have a viable Palestinian state if Israel controls 30% of the territory in this kind of a way and the Palestinians are reduced to the line. 